I'm joined on the line from New York by MMA commentator Phoenix Carnavale. Good evening, Phoenix. Hi, guys. So I want to talk more about the card for UFC 223, which has at this stage been absolutely decimated by numerous issues over the last week or so. But just before we get to that, your thoughts on, on Conor McGregor, because opinion seems to be split between he could do time for the incident with the bus to he could turn up at WrestleMania. Where does the future for Conor McGregor and UFC lie as, as you look at it? Well, before he gets to the UFC, he's got to deal with the New York State Athletic Commission, and he also has to deal with the NYPD. So, you know, currently he's being arraigned. There's going to be a ton of fines. There's going to be some suspensions. So, but he's going to be able to show up at WrestleMania and still promote himself. He's just going to shell out a ton of money. Uh, the UFC was currently working on the next deal with Conor McGregor. So if he's going to be suspended, if he's going to have to deal with some type of code of conduct with the UFC, we might not see him fight for a while, which is a shame. If you look at it this way. The best thing about combat sports is if you have if you dislike someone, if you have animosity with them, you could actually fight them for money and have six weeks to train for them. So <laughs> it's just it was a bad business move. But for, business move. but for as brilliant a fighter as Conor McGregor is, He's got $100 million in the bank from the fight against Floyd Mayweather. Maybe he doesn't need to fight anybody anymore. Like, is there a sense maybe that McGregor likes this showmanship now more than actually getting into the octagon? I think so. Because if you really wanted to fight Khabib, you could fight him for money. Um, so I, I think basically he's really about the attention always being on him. Because think about it. The attention on that 223 card is really off now. You know, because of the fact that I don't think he intentionally hurt those fighters that they weren't able to fight. But, you know, who are we talking about? We're talking about Conor McGregor yet again. Is there an expectation then around the UFC that McGregor will return, that all of this is part of the show and it's building up ultimately to a fight, maybe not in six weeks' time, but maybe in six months' time against Khabib and suddenly the whole world is talking about it? Or again, is there a feeling that actually maybe we have seen McGregor for the last time? It really all depends on Conor McGregor. It really all depends. On, well, first, it depends on how he's going to be fine and how they're going to approach the situation. But then secondly, it really depends on him. Does he? He's never defended his titles. And as much as he has a legacy and he has a reputation, he's never defended. I mean, it's one thing to win the titles, but to be a dominant champion is really what stays in, a, in the record books. And I'm not saying that his... His legacy will be diminished, but it'll be questioned because he didn't defend his titles. So he's been the lightweight champion since beating Eddie Alvarez November 2016 at Madison Square Garden. Hasn't competed since, so it's over 500 days that that title's been up in the air. Saturday night, it was supposed to be a line in the sand. The division's top two contenders, Tony Ferguson and Khabib, going head-to-head -head on that. And then last week, as part of the promotion, Tony Ferguson trips, falls... And he's ruled out with a knee injury. Max Holloway, yeah. who's the reigning featherweight champion, agrees to step in at just six days' notice. And then just a couple of hours ago, we hear that Max Holloway has been ruled out. So where does UFC 223 stand right now? Well, I mean, this story is bigger than any soap opera we've ever seen. I mean, it, you, could, you can't make this up. Right now, with Max Holloway out, the only way the Athletic Commission would be able to get somebody in that spot if they had already gone through the entire processes of being cleared. So that means someone on the card who could possibly make that weight and fight Khabib could possibly take Max Holloway's place. Maybe it's going to be Pettis because Pettis was to, supposed to fight Chisea. Chisea gets cut by the glass um, from the, you know, the shattered glass in the window McGregor broke. So maybe they move him up. But as of right now, that Khabib fight is probably going to be off. How much damage then, the incident with the bus, how much damage has it done to this card? How many fighters have been affected? It's taken off three fights, two via injury and um, one via, uh, you know, because he was involved. So Lobov was involved with the incident, so he was taken off of the fight as a disciplinary action. So those are three fights now that have been cancelled. Rose Namajunas was also involved. She was left shook up after the incident, but she is going to fight. She's fighting Joanna Jujacek, and it seems yes. as though now that's more than likely going to be the main event. 
that's going to be the main event, and that's a big fight. I mean, people are saying that this card is destroyed, but it's not destroyed. There's actually a lot of great fights on even the undercard. We're seeing Felice Harry come back. Ally Aquenta is fighting. So there are big names on this card. It is still a very, very good card, uh, even missing the people that you know were scheduled to fight. So I would say it's still worth it. 223 still has a lot of really good talent on the card. It's unfortunate, especially because Ferguson and Khabib were the fight that everybody thought was going to be fight of the year. Mm. So I guess UFC 223 still has a big attraction for, should we say, the UFC purists, the people, the hardcore supporters. But is this going to sell? Is this going to sell to your general sports fan in America without that main event, without Ferguson against Khabib, or even without Holloway against Khabib? Uh, you know, I'm not sure, but I would say that Nama Yunus and Yon Jacek really do have a big following as well. Um, Joanna has been on some pretty big cards and has a bitty, pretty big following. And then Rose, who's been around for a while, is an exceptional fighter. So the main event should still have a lot of eyes on it, especially because mixed martial arts and and women's competitive fighting has really taken women's fighting to a whole nother level. So I think that people will not be disappointed. They'll only be disappointed off the fights that they lost. It can be difficult to tell at times in the fight game what people's relationships are because so much of it is bravado and having to put out there that there is a dislike of each other to try and sell tickets. So I'm not sure what McGregor's relationship was like with his fellow competitors and those around him in similar weight groups. But has that changed with what's happened over the last 24 hours? Are people suddenly sick of this that, again, a night like this that should be all about the other fighters is once again all about Conor McGregor? I do think that people are are sick of it because of the behavior. Now, it's one thing when he's on a press conference and he's completely witty and he's got an extremely high fight IQ and he calls fights and he's he really lives up to the name Mystic Mac. And it's another thing when you go out there and you hurt fighters. And he, because of his loyalty to his teammate was justifying it dana white and him were texting last night dana had said on espn this morning that they were texting back and forth and connor was justifying his behavior like it had to be done and you know it's it's not the mafia com connor it's professional sports so the backlash from some of the fighters themselves on twitter are like this is disgusting we're professional athletes they were upset that other athletes were hurt so i think a lot of athletes are really turning against him. It's been far from an ideal week for Habib with already two opponent changes and now looking at possibly maybe not having a fight or possibly fighting as you say maybe Anthony Patisse coming in at the very last minute. Have we heard much from Habib about right. what's been going on? Well he basically you know at first he was like I think it's funny that he comes in and tries to attack a bus when he really has an opportunity to fight me if he wants to fight me. Uh, you know I think Habib did the right thing by not leaving the bus and getting himself fined and not in possibly not being able to fight even without the Max Holloway pullout. But Khabib's basically saying that he's laughing at McGregor because if he wants to fight he'll fight. He, and he now he's saying anytime, any place. I don't care if it's for a belt. I don't care if it's this. I don't care if it's that. Which you know, to fight fans, it's like no, no, do it in the in the cage so we can enjoy it. If you were to stake your last ten dollars on it, do you ever think we'll see McGregor and Habib in the cage? <sighs> I don't know. I really don't know. You know, right now I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no. I'm going to say if you really wanted to fight that guy, you would take it like a business and have a business strategy. You wanted to fight You wanted to fight Mayweather. You took your time. You got it done. You did the paperwork. You did deals between two promotions. So if you wanted to fight Khabib, I don't know if you run at a bus. I think you kind of make it happen, right? You, you come back to fight. You train. Yeah. All right. Great stuff. MMA commentator Phoenix Carnavale. Thanks a lot for talking to us this evening. Ah, thanks for having me. Hey, hope you enjoyed that latest offering from Off The Ball. If you want to subscribe, and you should, check out just up here. All our latest stuff is just down here. Generally, knock yourself out.